excited, we're gonna be doing a bit of a Q&A. You are more than welcome to pull your phones out, take some content, hold that clap. We've got a long runway to walk down. We've got Juliet Amara, Emily Hampshire, and our one and only Lindy, we have Maddie Ziegler. I've got a question for everyone off the top. Tell us a little bit about how you prepared for the roles. What was your process like? Maybe we'll start with you, Maddie. Yeah, um, I obviously had the opportunity to have very open and vulnerable conversations with Molly when I initially read the script, and then but something that Molly did, which I'm so grateful for, is I got to uh, get on a FaceTime call with two incredible, incredible girls who both have MRKH, and they basically just were so kind enough to open up and ex ex kind of share their experiences and their stories, and it was so insightful. I feel like I learned so much throughout the process, and they gave me so many gems to go in with. And yeah, that was kind of it. And I obviously, Molly gave me like, loads and loads and loads of research and I wanted to be as accurate as and as spot on for Molly and for the community and I just hope I did everyone justice. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing to have a reference in person that's definitely helpful. Emily, I'd love to hear a little bit about uh, your experience as well, prepping. Um, well, I, I did speak to some people who had uh, breast cancer survivors and um, they told me about their experience with that and I I spoke with Molly a lot because it was based on her mother. Um, one of the weird things that happened though, because I, I found Molly was so generous in, this was her story, and, but she let us have ownership of the, the parts after. And um, there was this one scene where Maddie calls me a MILF. Uh, <laughs> it was, that was improv. Um, and I take it as a compliment. But uh, in between that, Molly had asked me, she's like, what do you think just off the cuff, like, what do you think, what perfume do you think Rita wore? And I said, um, black opium. Just for no reason, I've never thought of black opium in my life. And she's like, that was the perfume my mother wore. <laughs> so that was so crazy. Um, but yeah, that was my preparation come full circle. So were you wearing black opium the whole time? No. Okay. No. <laughs> it was like a scent memory thing. Yeah, you know, no. It, so. it was we, and it was like one of the last scenes we filmed. She's like, now the face of yeah, the yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, we need a sponsorship, hashtag <laughs> ad. Anyone in the house? And I'd love to hear you, Julia. What was your process? Sure. Hi. Hello. Um, <laughs> um, I met Molly while I was working on my TV series, The Big Door Prize, and she talked to me for this. She said I reminded her of her best friend in high school. Um, okay. which I obviously had the lovely chance of playing Maddie's best friend, but basically I went to LA. We sat on Maddie's floor and we had tacos. It was really great. <laughs> um, good floor, good tacos. <laughs> and yeah, I think it was really easy for us because our friendship was really easy. Um, we're like sisters, so. Um, it was really, 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 really easy to love her and I already loved Molly first, so. It was just a really natural way for me to play Viv. Um, it was a lot different than me, but but it was really fun too. Yeah, that's amazing. It definitely helps we have a natural base of friendship. I'm sure. Absolutely. I'd love to hear a little bit about Canada. I mean, obviously you filmed this here. I know we got some Canadian locals up here. But what was the experience like? Do you have any favorite places? Any local spots? Of what was the whole filming process? Dairy Queen. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I grew up having. Dairy Queen, and then it, I don't have the luxury of having in LA, so I, I had a blizzard for breakfast today. Um, you know, but in um, all dress trips, you guys, they're life changing. Um, no, I feel like an honorary Canadian now. I'm so lucky to have done two back to back projects in Canada with female Canadian filmmakers, which has been just such a lovely day. I'm so grateful for that. Um, I love being here. I hope I get to continue that streak going. And the delicacy of the all dressed chips. Like oh, our finest work. The raw ones. Yeah. 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 I, I also made her try a sip of a Caesar last night, which she hated, unfortunately. Yeah. I forget that those are a Canadian yeah. Yeah. thing as well. Yeah, I've never heard of that before. <laughs> we shot in Sudbury, which I've shot there a bunch of times, usually in the freezing cold winter. And um, I never realized that Sudbury is actually quite beautiful. So beautiful. Um, and also, uh, as a wrap gift, Molly gave me a Tim Beeb Spenny pack, which <laughs> I was wanting so badly, could not get one. Someone is 
friends, I think, with him. <laughs> and he's got me hooked up with the thing I wanted most in the world, which was a Tim Beeps. Okay. So, sorry, was that everyone's rap gift or that was exclusive no, to you? <laughs> well, what were your rap gifts then? Anything uh, Tim themed, a little Eater merch? <laughs> I didn't get any. No, I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Okay, I want to know about um, what was all of your experiences, like an understanding about MRKH before doing this film? Did you guys have any prior knowledge? No, I was, I was unfamiliar. And it's so crazy to think now with how open the community has been and so welcoming and I feel so lucky to have talked to so many incredible people in Molly obviously um, but I think this is like to for this to be the first film to be fully recognizing such an incredible thing like I I'm, I feel so happy to be doing this and um, to bring light to this because it should be talked about more and it should be known as a woman I would think that I would know about this so um, I'm so happy that it's becoming more world like wide and, and well known, so yeah, for sure. And what was the prep like for the rest of the cast as well? Like, was there any like initial you know conversations about her experience, or how did that work with all of you getting introduced to it as well? Well, I didn't know about yeah. Mark Age either, and um, and I think it was just that this was Molly's story, and I do believe when somebody tells their authentic story and it's so specific it really becomes universal because they're being honest in this really specific way that touches everybody. And, um, and I think it, it just opened up the whole conversation of any kind of difference, like anything that you feel like you're ashamed of uh, as a female, like you were taught that there's something wrong with our bodies sometimes. And I, this kind of being honest about it makes that shame go away and we're just um, reclaim it and talk about it. And um, I, I completely agree. I think that theme is so evident and I mean even the importance of I mean, this film is portrayed by a female doctor, but just someone who is compassionate and listening and understanding. Um, what do you guys want young women specifically to take away after watching this film? Yeah, I think as you can see with Lindy's kind of overall arch in the film, obviously I, I love seeing like the first and last scene being completely mirrored, but with a completely different intention. She took ownership over her body and reclaimed her power, and I think it's so beautiful to see. And you should not let anyone else tell you what you can or cannot do with your body. And at the, at the end, it was ultimately up to her to choose. And she was able to like really just sit in that. And I think it's so beautiful and so powerful and brave and vulnerable. And I hope that people um, kind of take something away from that. Yeah. I don't know. For yeah. Sure. Yeah, I think like, you know. Uh, <laughs> I can get a clap. I can get a clap. <laughs> I think it's really important for young women to begin the journey of radical love within themselves. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it takes you until adulthood to even start that, or even later in adulthood until, to, until you start that. But I think it's really important to engage in that from a young age. And I think we're not taught that. And I think, you know, anyone who watches this film, I hope that they begin like radical love within themselves and whatever that means for them. I think that's really, really important. That's so powerful. Another round of applause for that one. Now, I know we were chatting a little bit prior about even the concept of fitting in and I mean, it's seen in the film, whether it's through your character still seemingly having to fit in and take the right selfies and, and feel out of touch or it's not just exclusive to a teenage experience. I think we all experience it at different degrees and at different times of our life. Um, what, is, what is the biggest advice you have to someone that's really struggling with that right now that just feels like they can't get their groove or feel like they have to fit in and like whatever fitting in means? Like there's such a power to that word. I, I mean, I think how I was affected by this um, is when I watch Lindy or Maddie's, Mindy's monologue at the end where she finally says, the thing she's so ashamed of and so scared that everybody's gonna know about. And she says, yeah, this is me. And there is so much, not only personal power in that, but you give other people the opportunity to feel like, oh my God, me too. Me too, like I'm okay too. And and there's a generosity in that. And there's a, a this thing about like the thing you 
think that makes you different or that th is wrong with you is actually the thing that is special about you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important in this. Absolutely. Also, there's so much pressure, I'm sure, at any age in life. I'm only 21, but it's just, like, things take so much time to settle. Like, I think it's, at least for me, like, you think you have to have it all figured out so young, but things will fall into place ultimately. It, it takes time and that's okay. Like, I've learned that that's okay. And it's a, like, there's no need to put pressure on yourself. Like, things are gonna play out the way they're supposed to. And sometimes it feels like a 10 when really it's like a six, you know? But in the moment, it's so heavy. And I think like, it's so nice when you reflect and look back and you're like, wow, I made it through that moment. And now like, I'm okay, you know? So it's a good reminder. I still am like reminding myself Sure. There's yeah. something about taking your power back oh as God. well and putting things on your own terms, and yeah. you have a control over the narrative, just like Lindy did in the situation as well. Yeah. Um, I know we were chatting a bit about the friendship and how that evolved off screen, transcended yeah. on screen. Yeah. I'd love to hear how, um, actually, Emily, you also got into that mother daughter rapport. How did you guys build that off camera, and how did, what did that look like? Um, well, it's weird to talk about this with Maddie right next to me, but I kind of, it, you know, we've all watched Maddie grow up on screen, and um, I instantly, before I even met her, felt this, like, must protect this girl at all costs. Um, and I've always felt weird in the mother role, like, I've never been cast as that. I don't have children. I have an abominable snowman. Um, <laughs> that is my child, but... Some people don't count that, which... Are you talking about a dog? What, what, what is that? No, it's an abominable snowman. It's, oh, uh, some people say he's stuffed, he's just plain stuffed. Right, oh, but he's acting stuffed in front of you because he doesn't trust you. But um, <laughs> anyways, but Maddie, I just... Molly had us over to her house, and um, I just felt this instant, like, bond in the sense that I wasn't playing a mother, the, my idea of a mother anymore. It was like sometimes Maddie and or Lindy is the more mature one. And sometimes Rita, my part, or me is the one who needs to be mothered. Um, and those status shifts would happen. And I think that happens in real life. Um, and so it felt natural also because this wasn't like just the mother part. Like she was a whole human who had who had a whole life and um, problems of her own that she didn't want to put on her child, but ended up doing it anyway. She had flaws, and so that's kind of, it was all from the script, and then from Molly being like, uh, Maddie being the cool, I mean, Molly's cool, but Maddie's the coolest. <laughs> <laughs> Love that, wow, official hype woman hired. Yeah. <laughs> um, of course, there's some very heavy and important topics that you all cover in the film. Flipping that, what was some of the most fun and lighthearted moments on set that are just like highlight memories? I would love to go through <laughs> one by one and hear all of your highlights. Ah, um, track, bye. rehearsal, rehearsal. What is it, like practice? <laughs> Coach Dick, shout out to you. You were yeah. awesome. Um, you were great. That was, <laughs> that was an experience for sure. Yeah. Also, like, just a shout out to all the track runners with us because they did run slower so that we looked faster. <laughs> <laughs> we were not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had some fun, fun moments. I feel like the night shoots where we were just delusional. Yeah, we yeah, we got we got really delusional at uh, most days. Most days. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, lots of Dairy Queen. Again, <laughs> Dairy Queen. Uh, what else? Like things that we probably shouldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The girls that get it. We always say that. Yeah. That's our the girls that get it, get it. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. Some secrets are better kept as secrets. Yeah. Um, I want to do one final round of applause. Thank you guys so much for coming here. And thank you for such an incredible film. Thank you for being a great audience. I think there's a few MRKH girls out here. So I just want to say thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you again one final time. Really appreciate it. Elevation Pictures, thank you as well. And I hope you enjoy fitting in in theaters February 2nd. Thanks, everyone.